Hey guys, it's Ariel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. As you guys know, I pretty recently got back home from a trip to Canada, and this was actually the very first time that I brought Jean home with me, so he met my whole family and everything, and that was just a huge experience in and of itself. But what always shocks me is that when I make the trip from France back home to Toronto, where I was born and raised and grew up and like lived for 20 years of my life, that things that used to be so normal and integral to day-to-day -day lifestyle there seem so foreign and disorienting to me when I travel back home. And that's what I want to talk about today, you know, the, the big and even the small differences between North American and French culture. And the very first thing on my list, probably the biggest thing and the thing that I felt almost immediately getting off the plane was the absolute peace and serenity and relief that washed over my body and soul once I got off that plane. And if you think about it, the lifestyle in Paris when you compare it to a city like Toronto or a country like Canada is just so incredibly different. You guys have seen all of the videos on my channel talking about how hard and stressful it is in France in general for a foreigner, you know, whether that be through challenging administrative processes like getting a visa or the language barrier or being stressed all the time because you're worried about being pickpocketed or because you're crammed onto a metro with like hundreds of other people during rush hour. All of that just doesn't exist back home in Toronto. I was never worried about getting robbed. And I think that's probably the biggest one because you guys know in Paris, I will like clutch my purse wherever I'm going. I'm always vigilant, always looking around, always stressed looking at my surroundings. And not once did I do this in Toronto. Um, and I even pointed out to Jean because there were people all over the city, like everywhere, big places like the Rogers Center watching the Blue Jays game or the ferry going to Center Island. And I would point out to Jean and be like, oh, mm, that person has their phone in their back pocket. Oh, you would never see that in Paris. And I think that it's just a general feeling for everyone because the country and the city is so much bigger compared to Paris where the, the population density is just crazy, that people are used to their space and they want their space and they give you space. So there's a lot less of this feeling of just being smushed in with everyone and being worried about what everyone else is doing around you. And on that topic, probably one of the biggest things that was just so funny to John and I is that we were taking the Metro, sorry, we were taking the subway home from, I think it was the Raptors game from downtown Toronto back home um, to where I live. And uh, it was like 5.30 p.m. and I was so stressed. I was like, oh my gosh, Jean, this is just total rush hour. Everyone is gonna be out of the office, going home, jam-packed on the Metro. And we get into the Metro and it's a little bit busy. You know, it is rush hour, so it's, it's a bit busy. Oh, also, and keep in mind in Toronto, we only have two major Metro lines. In Paris, I think you've gotta have like, I wanna say 16, 17, like, totally, uh, totally a different type of metro system. So in Toronto, we only have two. So you would think that naturally they would be jam-packed at rush hour, but it wasn't that bad. To just quickly show you guys what I mean, here is the map of the Paris metro system. Okay. Now here is the map of the Toronto metro system. Look at those beautiful two lines. What was so funny to me is that, and Jean as well, is that in Paris, when the metro comes by and there's tons of people and tons of people in the metro, you're not, you know, politely waiting your turn. You're not waiting for a relatively empty, met empty metro car. You are throwing yourself into the car with everyone. You're getting pushed into the car with everyone and you are just smushed up under people's in armpits, in their faces. That is how you ride the metro in Paris. And it was so funny. It was like 5.30, we're getting on the metro and the metro doors open and nobody rushes forward. It's like people calmly get off. People on the platform then assess, you know, what's the space looking like in the metro car? And some people get on and Jean are like, we're ready to fight for our life to get on this metro. And it's like, nope, you know, maybe 10 people get on the metro. It's not too smushed. And you just see these men with their briefcases standing on the platform. Like, no, nah, it's all good. I'll wait for the next one. And it's like, you would never see that in Paris. The second thing I noticed 
was the plastic surgery. And it's crazy because as a kid, I don't feel like this was as present or obvious in the people around me. I think if people were getting plastic surgery, maybe they're doing a little bit of Botox here and there. So I do think that in recent years, plastic surgery has really taken off. But you don't really see this in Paris. You don't really see this in France. The only people typically that would have visible plastic surgery are tourists or foreigners. It's not in their beauty culture or standards to look like you visibly changed your appearance. And one of the most popular procedures I think in North America today and a procedure that is just so clockable, so visible is lip filler. And that's like the number one thing that I saw in Toronto. No matter where I went, whether it was walking along, you know, the lakeshore or harbor front or going out to eat at a casual little restaurant, like at least five or six girls on the walk to the restaurant or in the restaurant would have giant, giant lips. Like, I, I don't want to say this in a mean way or anything like that. It's just, it's just so not a part of French beauty culture that when you see it so commonly in a city like Toronto, it's just completely shocking. The third thing that I noticed and made me kind of sad was the car culture in Toronto. And I think in Canada in general, like I was saying, Canada is a very big country. It's a lot less dense than France or specifically a city like Paris because we don't have this developed public transportation system and because things are a lot more spread out across the country, across the city, across the province, people are a lot less likely uh, to take the public transportation options than they are to get in their car and drive. And it's one thing, you know, if you're driving your whole family downtown for the baseball game, no problem. But what I noticed is that specifically during rush hour as well, but even on the weekends, like you would be on the highway and you would look to your left and your right and there'd be cars everywhere and there would just be one passenger in every car. And again, it's hard to be, it's hard to be critical of that because I don't think there is the public transportation infrastructure there to support all of these people who are trying to come in and out of the city who live a lot further than people would um, in Paris living in and outside of the city. Like the distance is much different than it would be in a place like Toronto. But yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely a, a sad thing to see and made me feel extra grateful um, for all of the public transportation that we have in Paris. Like, of course we have the metros, we have the buses, we have the trains that relay you really well to anything outside of the city. You've got um, a really affordable and well-maintained bike sharing system. So yeah, it made me it made me thankful for that in Paris and a little bit sad to, to see all the cars back home. The fourth thing that shocked me was the price, quality, and variety of the food when you eat out in Toronto versus Paris. There are restaurants in my head that I used to go to as a child and as a young adult, and I just have these fond, amazing memories of them, and I was so excited to take Jean back to these restaurants and to share those memories and the good food with him. And the one example I had in my head was the old spaghetti factory. If you guys have ever been to Toronto, ever been to that restaurant, let me know what you think about this point down below in the comments. But Again, I, I took him to this restaurant. I was so excited. It's like one of my most favorite restaurants in Toronto, or it was. And, um, you know, we start off with bread and it comes with this delicious whipped garlic bread. And I'm telling him how excited I am to have it. And I just, it's my favorite part about coming to this restaurant. And we slather on the bread and I taste it. And it tastes like nothing, literally nothing. It was like eating a piece of cardboard because the bread also is not like a French baguette. It's, you know, one of those little tiny baguettes that you put in the oven and you defrost and stuff. So yeah, disappointing. I was like eating cardboard with no flavor butter. And then our entrees come to the table. And if you live in North America, I'm sure you have bought this or you've seen this salad mix in the stores, but you know those bags of lettuce that are just like chopped cabbage, carrots, and iceberg lettuce or romaine? 
and you just buy them in the store like that. That was our salad. It was literally a tiny plate of this bagged salad. And I was just like, come on, if you are eating out at a restaurant, if you're paying to eat out, you're paying, unless it's fast food, you're paying for like something homemade. You know, you want a salad that has a little spark to it, not something that I could literally go to the grocery store and buy myself for one fifth of the price. It was almost embarrassing to like tell y'all this is one of my favorite restaurants and be served like this plop of bagged salad on our plates. And then the main was okay, but again, it wasn't, it didn't really have the flavors or the care that you have when you're eating at a restaurant in Paris. And the bill comes and with tip and tax, tip is also not something you pay in Paris. So it's not a cost you add to the bill. But anyways, all together, two people to eat this like mediocre meal was $100, which is more than double what you would pay in Paris. And I'm using the old spaghetti factory as an example, but we went to a couple different restaurants where the food was okay, but like the prices were completely unhinged. It made me not want to go out and eat at a restaurant. I think as well that this is probably why there's such a bigger culture of going out and eating out and going out for drinks in Paris than there is in Canada and or in a city like Toronto because it's not affordable to the consumer and for the price you're paying, it's not really worth it. So I've always been critical of the fact that in Toronto, I don't think people go out and socialize and, you know, enjoy a night out as often as people do in Paris. I'm always surprised because my girlfriends in Toronto will go out like once every two weeks. I'm like, no, we should be going out more often. And so it's something that I'm critical of, but I completely understand when I come back home and I see that it's just not worth the price you're paying for it. And I feel like I'm completely rambly at this point, but it's not just the price and the quality of food that's shockingly lower in Toronto. It's also that people don't go out as often as you would in Paris, which I think is like a vicious cycle. People don't go out because it's expensive and not that good. And that's why people don't go out and they don't go out and you know, it just, it's a cycle. The fifth and final thing that shocked me kind of on the same theme of food and restaurants is the sugar. The amount of sugar in Canadian food, whether it's prepackaged food or eating out at a restaurant, it is shocking. And what's crazy to me is my whole life, like 20 years of life, I grew up eating this food and thinking it was totally normal and delicious. And then I go to France and I live my life there for six years and I come back home to Canada and I'm tasting this food and it's like, it's way too sweet. And my tongue and my palate is just so sensitive to it. And it's like things that I loved, like what, what is an example? Oh my God. Okay. Of course. Okay. This one is of course, you know, a sugar example, but I took Jean into Baskin Robbins, which used to be my favorite ice cream store. I loved their peanut butter chocolate ice cream. And I take him into the store and it's like the smell, the, and it's crazy because I never noticed the smell as a Torontonian, but we just walked in and it was just this huge wave of chemically sugar smelling things. It was awful. It was so unappetizing and I didn't even know what it was. Like I had never smelled that amount of concentrated sugar ever. And then it happened again when we went into a candy store and a fudge store. And yeah, okay, the examples I'm giving are sugar-based products, but I've been to tons of ice cream shops and candy shops in France, and I've never had that kind of chemically sugar smell. And I do know that there are certain types of sugars and chemicals that are not allowed in France, that are allowed in places like Canada or the US. So I actually do think that probably is what that smell was, but it wasn't just sugary foods. It was also things like takeout, whether it's Greek or Chinese or pizza, the level of sugar was just, I don't wanna say a lot higher, but high enough for me to notice a difference and feel like it was not as appetizing as it used to be for me. So yeah, that's about it. Those are the most shocking things that I noticed between the French and Canadian culture this time when I went back home. Let me know what you guys think and if there are other big culture shocks that you guys experience in your trip to Paris compared to back home. I'd be really interested to hear about them and also let me know what you think of the things that shocked me, whether you think it's normal or if I'm just complaining. And I'm sorry this video was kind of ranty. I have all these, you know, thoughts and feelings in my head. Sometimes I don't 
um, express them clear enough. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.